Welcome back, Zero K fans. This is Shadow Three 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 bringing you a round two match, a quarterfinals match between Drone and Banana. So last time we saw Cube versus so Cube versus the Sponge, and the Sponge put a Valiant Effort in, but he lost in the last game, unfortunately, due to basically forgetting to put a couple defenses up. So now it's Drone versus Banana, and Drone apparently did much better against New Clutch than Banana against Sabir, though Sabir is a pretty powerful player, so I think that. It should be a fairly even match. The players look like Banana is a little bit less experienced than Drone is, but we shall find out how this goes shortly. And Drone is also the organizer of this tournament, so thank you, Drone, for organizing this tournament. Very kind of you. All right, let us begin. So Drone is in the west side of the map. This is Red Comet, by the way. Drone is in the west side of the map, and Banana is in the east side of the map. Both players going for very quick metal extractor. Heavy Tank Factory from Drone and Banana is not quite sure what to build yet. He's morphing first, actually. Probably wants quick E-cell. This is unusual. I'm actually really surprised he hasn't plopped his factory down. And there it is. Beam Laser E-cell dropping a Shield Bot factory on a map like this. This is unusual. Heavy Tank's coming up, and that Woolly Kodachi's now... He might be expecting Panthers and might want to try to roach them out. I don't know. That would be weird. But... Or shield them out, maybe? Anyway, Kodachi coming up. Nothing out of the ordinary for, banana, for Drone. He is also going for E-Cell, but he has more mechs out at the moment. While Banana is building up some bandits. He has bandits set up. He, does, he doesn't have anything un, out of the ordinary. Neither player is doing something too unusual. Welder coming up next will probably be Panthers. Drone will probably start just spamming Panthers at this point. He has his Kodachi. He has his Welder. Panthers will be forthcoming as he expands out in order to support the Heavy Tank Factory. Because the thing with the Heavy Tank Factory is, you, as you can see, the cost of the units are very high. You need to have at least 20 metal in order to make sure that the Heavy Tank Factory is even worth it. And I should say 20 metal input. Obviously you need 20 metal income in order to actually make that possible. But it's what you need. And the Kodachi taking a lot of damage to Banana's Commander. Not able to deal with any of the metal extractors. In fact, has to retreat pretty decisively. So, Drone is going to have to try to harass from another angle, and he's going to need to harass with this. This could actually kind of needs to harass, needs to get itself kind of paid for, especially by harassment. No, more Well is coming up for Drone, not Panthers quite yet, though Panthers are more than likely to be coming soon. Since at this point, Heavy Tanks are basically the Panther Factory, and there they are, 20 Panthers in the queue. And at the same time... You see that Banana is finishing up building up his opening forces with the Bandits and Convicts. Convicts getting up some more energy economy, and Banana right now does have a slight metal advantage. Energy is about the same, but metal is definitely Banana's advantage right now. That being said, the Kodachi hasn't actually had a chance to really harass too much. It is going to be able to get rid of one of the Bandits pretty effectively. Actually, both the Bandits are on fire. One of them will go down. The other one, I don't think will survive, but we'll find out. And it looks like the second one is actually going to not burn to death. It will stay alive. And one of the metal extractors is going down. And Bandit trying to deal with the Kodachi. And not quite able to do so. The last shot is able to finish off the Kodachi. Which can now go in pretty much with impunity to deal with everything else that's in here. Or not quite. No, it's almost able to do so. Just barely stays alive. 17 health at the end. That laser turret nearly kills it. But the important thing is nearly... Doesn't completely kill it, only nearly kills it. And this is important because that is... That Kodachi needs to stay alive to harass a bit more. Needs to take out at least another Medley Extractor or two to be worth it. Stopping one of those under production, but not that big of a deal right now. Bandits are trying to deal with it. It is kind of flanked in right now. It's kind of hard for the Kodachi to escape. It only has about one escape route, which is to the north. And that could easily be closed off. However, that's also an escape route around which there is a Medley Extractor... As an outlaw comes in to try to deal with this, and unfortunately, it doesn't get the metal extractor, it gets the solar plant instead. Not terrible, but at this point, Drone has actually taken a lot of time to expand himself. At this point, Drone has actually turned around the economy game. Harassment has helped a lot with that, but he's also just been expanding in the background as he's been attacking, as he's been harassing with the Kodachi, and finally, the Kodachi does go down. It cannot escape from this position. He's gonna try to get one more shot off, able to do so, killing two bandits in the process. And heavily damaging a third, but that'll probably repair before it gets into another battle. And Drone getting up a lot of energy infrastructure for overcharge once that becomes relevant. And also the Panthers have been set up. Three Panthers are built up. Two of them are in position. The third one is being built. Actually, it hasn't been finished yet. 
metal extractors coming along the southwest, entire southwest side for drone. And Banana does see the Panthers coming in. I'm sure he was well aware it was going to happen. Panther starting to harass that metal extractor. And Outlaw Thug coming in to try to deal with this, apparently. But the Panther itself does not have... It doesn't have a whole lot of power on its own, but it does have a lot of EMP, and that's huge. If it's anything, it's basically stun locked. Especially if there's two in there, and the laser turret is going down. That laser turret is no longer really relevant at this point. But that is... Yep, that is no longer a relevant laser turret. That is dead. And the thug and outlaw cannot catch up to it. Wow, I'm really surprised that shield bots on red comet. Why would you go for shield bots on red comet? There's got to be a reason for it. I just don't know what it is offhand. Now, Racketeer's up for disarm, and that will be somewhat effective. That'll stop these outlaws from doing too much. Sorry, the that'll stop the panthers from doing too much. But even then, the panthers are going to be able to do quite a lot. And the Racketeer has disarmed the panther for about five seconds. That panther going down. So these Racketeers definitely a better idea. Because disarm damage, there's a lot of it. It doesn't take a whole lot to actually deal several seconds worth of disarm, because it doesn't stop the units. The disarm damage was, is considerably more powerful than EMP damage. However, it does need to be microed around because this one panther here can deal quite a bit, but the thing is the other two panthers are... Actually, the other panther was already disarmed, so that's out. That's done. At this point, the panthers are being kept to fairly low numbers. But this is not going to last forever. There are four panthers once again. At this point, FX Drone has a lot of metal being built up. He has a gunship plant as well, but the metal... All that metal is being pushed into the heavy tank factory, except for the ten going into the gunship plant. Which means these Panthers are getting killed, but they're getting rebuilt faster. Now, at the same time, Banana does have nothing pushing his shield block factory. He has 25 metal. He is excessing metal. He is wasting metal quite heavily, and at the same time, he's trying to do what he can to deal with what Panthers are being pushed forward. But it's not enough. At this point, there's a lot more Panthers where that came from, and... Six Panthers already. This is going to be this is getting tougher and tougher to deal with, even with the Racketeers. There's only so much the Racketeers can do. Eventually, those Panthers are just going to be able to deal the damage they need to. And since they have a bit of splash, it's well, not that much splash. Actually, no, they have no splash. Never mind. They are single shot, but that helps the Bandits out. But even then, the Panthers still are very powerful. They can deal with a lot of stuff. They can deal with pretty much anything. And especially half a dozen Panthers are going to have no problem dealing with whatever they come across. Especially things like Thugs and Outlaws. Now against Bandits, there is a bit of a chance. But against Thugs and Outlaws, it's going to be very difficult for the Thugs and Outlaws to actually do anything effective. But that Racketeer is that racketeer is pulling its weight. Those Racketeers are winning, or at least getting Banana Eye to stay in the game. They aren't winning in the game quite yet. Drone has Banshees up. He has a good tech switch going on. They are definitely stopping the Panthers from completely overwhelming him. And that is important, but at the same time, Banshees are in, and Vandals are not. Vandals aren't even planned yet. The Banshees are getting rid of Banana Eyes Commander, and that is going to go down. Banana has lost his commander, and Drone is losing a Banshee here and there to Outlaws, but really, at this point, it doesn't matter. Banana is so far behind in economy, and Drone just needs to push. It's over by economy and production. He's just now started to get enough production to actually use up his metal. But he was accessing for about two minutes there. And that is huge. Now the Panthers have free reign. The Racketeers are nowhere near close enough for it to matter, and these bandits trying to do what they can against the Banshees as well as the Panthers. That's going to be very tricky. Looks like they're instead just avoiding the entirely thinking of harassing, but not ultimately able to do so. And those Banshees are... However, not in the best position. Banshees can, of course, be hit by bandits, as you can see, pretty clearly, and that is a fairly effective way of getting rid of them, but not the most effective. Vandals, I wouldn't suggest making them yet, but it's still a powerful text switch to Banshees, or Brawlers actually would be the big one. Banshees can be dealt with, but Brawlers would just destroy these bandits without issue. At the same time, disarming, well, disarming a radar tower, no, build, no real reason for that. However, disarming one of the Panthers, that is useful. And probably another Panther as well, but Banana needs to be microing around, disarming the units that are not currently disarmed. One of them, actually, it looks like the Racketeer is actually doing a pretty smart job of dealing with that. Making sure to disarm the ones that need it. 
And we have Bell in the center of the map. Banshees are doing a pretty good job against the bandits. The bandits trying to do what they can, but unfortunately there's too many Banshees coming up. Actually, the bandits are being pretty cost effective, but even then it doesn't matter all that much. And that's with Rakshir support. And the Rakshir support really was turning this around, giving the bandits any chance whatsoever. And as it stands, even then the Racketeers are taking a lot of damage. Able to lure the Banshees into the laser turret, however, and at the same time the Panther at the north doing a lot of damage to Banana Isaac infrastructure. Drone. He is still going for entirely Panther and Banshee. He hasn't swapped he hasn't swapped out any other units, he hasn't switched out his tech at all. I'm a bit surprised he hasn't decided to go for Brawler, because that seems like to be the best thing to do right now. The Banshees clearly are not doing an effective job. The bandits are able to get rid of them when they come into attack. Even with numbers, I would think that Brawler would be a better option. Black Dawn would be a little bit risky, but Brawler would just be quite reliable. Although admittedly, that does... I think he might be going for Banshees just because of the Racketeers. Because it does reduce the amount of Disarm damage effectively being dealt. Like, it disarms one unit at a time, so... Yeah, that Banshee's disarmed, but there's still another half of Banshee's to deal with. However, Banana is coming in with the Bandits. Taking care of Panthers, taking care of everything in, in its way. This group of bandits is doing a great job just tearing apart everything. Making sure that no defenses stop it. Laser Swords can't stop it. Banshees can't stop it. And the factory is going to be taking a lot of damage. However, the Laser Swords are not taking the damage they need to take in order for the bandits to stay alive. So a good break through the front line there of Drone's base, but not quite enough. And at the same time, Drone has just set up Laser Swords around to close Banana in, prevent any other expansion. And Drone at this point has tripled the economy. He's surprisingly not invested into heavier tanks, but he still has a lot of caretakers pushing forward this factory. And there we go, there's some heavy... A Goliath being built up. Be a minute and a half before that's done, but still a Goliath being built up, while at the same time, more and more Banshees being built up. That Goliath will probably finish off everything as it goes through, but... See, it looks like a Felon is being set up to deal with that, and actually the Felon is a fairly effective anti-heavy, so we'll see Goliath versus Felon. How will that play out? Very curious to see what will happen there, but in the meantime, Drone is still pushing forward with sheer numbers, and Banana not even letting that happen, throwing in the towel. That is game one of Drone versus Banana on Red Comet. So we'll be back shortly with game two, so stay tuned for that. Welcome back, Zero K fans. This is game two of FX Drone versus Banana in the Zero K One Day Tournament on January January seventh, January eleventh of twenty fourteen. This is a quarterfinals match, and Drone won game one. We're on game two in Small Divide, and we are beginning now. So Drone is in the southeast corner of the map, not quite building up his factory yet, and. Banana is going for Cloakabot Factor very quickly, and Drone is going for Shield Bot. And last game was Red Comet, Shields versus Heavy Tanks, and then Gunships. Which went about as well as you expected for the Shield Bots. I mean, admittedly, in a map that big, bots are not the most effective option. Unless it's a very hilly map like Onyx Cauldron. And even Onyx Cauldron vehicles work out pretty well. But on a map like Small Divide, it's very hilly. In that case, bots do wonderfully. But that's only because, well, Small Divide is so hilly. And also fairly small, but the hills are the big thing. So Cloakies versus Shields. This is a very common matchup. And Shields, the advantage to Shields is, of course, their toughness. The advantage to Cloakies is the fact that they can just get around and do sneaky things. In general, the early game, you have to be careful with the Cloakies to make sure you don't lose too many Glaives to Bandits. And then from there, you have to be careful that Felons aren't being built. Because Felons are hard to deal with. I'm pretty sure Sharpshooters are the way to go. But they are hard to deal with. It's important to make sure that you know how to deal with them. Because if you don't know how to deal with them, then it's going to be fairly difficult to do so. But on the other hand, you just stop them from building in the first place. That's kind of what you need to do in a sense. So Cloakies need to be imminent. doing a lot of harassment, making sure that the shield bots don't get a whole lot of stuff in. And this dirtbag is trying to block off the factory, and it will be able to do so. It's going to suicide itself right in front of the factory. No, not quite. It's... Unable to suicide in front of the factory to block it off. So Drone's little strategy is not going to work out there. He may be saying another dirtbag, but I doubt it. No, he is not. He is going straight for bandits. Completely focusing on bandits and getting... Actually, completely focusing on his economy. Getting his main base. Not a whole lot of reclaiming his main base. On the other hand, Banana is doing a lot of reclaiming. Mostly it's for energy at this point, but still... 
energy reclaim. Energy is kind of hard to come by near the beginning of the game. You're building early metal extractors, but then building early power plants can be a bit tricky, especially in a map where you're starting out low and wind generators aren't so reliable. Anyway, Banana is in a really bad spot right now. He's microing terribly against this one bandit. The thing is, when you're microing against the Raider game, it kind of comes down to retreating. Just because of the fact that when the players... Basically, the retreating enemy, even its equal range, they're going to be getting a hit later. Like, the one that's following them is basically running into the bullets as they're coming in, whereas the one that's retreating is basically getting hit by them at the very last second they could be. So overall, you don't want to be retreating. So you don't want to be fighting someone who's retreating. You want to be retreating yourself and forcing them to attack you. Hopefully getting into a nice surround, and then from there, just destroying everything. Anyway, drones sending in far more bandits. Focusing very heavily on that. And at the same time, Bananas focusing very heavily on Cloakybot. Glaives. Glaives, of course, is what you go for with Cloakybots. And another attack coming in. Actually, it's a really good positioning for Banana right now. But the... Well, Drone's not being stupid. He is putting his Glaives away, getting them out of there. He doesn't want... Sorry, putting his Bandits away. Doesn't want the Glaives to deal with them. And able to see the radar... On the radar, where the Glaives are. They're coming into his base. He knows that's happening. And at the same time, Banana is fully aware of the fact that these Bandits are coming in from the north. Can't really do much about it right now, but at the same time, he is harassing. Unfortunately, meeting up with the Commander. And that is not going to be effective. This commander is a standard beam laser E-cell commander. Got a nice black paint job, though. Especially a bit of a donation gift. You can get that if you... You get different paint jobs and different laser colors and such if you donate money. Sort of a little reward for doing so. And that apparently is what FX Drone has done. Just want to point that out. This game is free, but donations are appreciated. Anyway, back to the game, though. Banana is doing a nice job surrounding and getting rid of those bandits from Drone. So the west side of the map is fairly secure at this point, though admittedly on small divide. Secure is a very relative term. And as it stands, Banana, getting up some warriors, not a bad idea to get rid of the bandits. And getting some rockers, probably get rid of the commander, or at least to deal with the commander if it comes close. No heavy units have been up from drone, though. He's entirely focused on bandits so far, no thugs, no felons. Well, felons would be much later in the game, but thugs are a good sign that felons are coming within the next two or three minutes. And Banana is taking the center of the map. He is making sure that he has defenses there effectively, but unfortunately for him, Drone doesn't care about the center of the map very much. He cares about it enough to try to blockade it a bit and make sure he has his own front line. But he's harassing once again over to the west side of the map, which is now undefended. Once again, there's nothing in the way, and... That, of course, means that this metal extractor is once again not being built, and this rector is going down, and these other metal extractors are going to be protected. However, this warrior is going to come in range... That will be fine. That warrior is going to be able to deal with the bandits. No problem. And it does so! The bandits hardly last even five seconds. Now, at this point, I'm suspicious that there aren't any roaches or... Seriously suspicious that there aren't any roaches or ticks up. Especially ticks at this point. It's, oftentimes, a shield player will have to worry about that pretty quickly. Roach is not so surprising. I mean, drone is ahead right now. Kind of mildly ahead, but he is still kind of ahead, so... I'd be a bit surprised if he did go for that. However, nice harassment from this glaive by Banana, getting rid of a couple of metal extractors, getting rid of, or closing up some of the power plants. This outlaw is going to put a stop to that, but still, not a bad bit of harassment. Just making sure Drone does not have an easy time getting his economy going, or keeping his economy going as best as he might like. At the same time, Banana is expanding on his own, so the players are fairly close to even on metal economy. Drone is much, much, much further ahead in energy, thanks to these windmills. Just would, have, would have been a much more effective rating target, but... Oh well, I don't think Banana was fully aware of that. Still, Banana is getting more warriors. He is definitely focused more on defense, on consolidating his holdings, than on destroying drones. And that's not a safe strategy. It's typically, playing 0k, you kind of want to destroy your opponent's economy, at least as much as you're building your own. Admittedly, Banana has been harassing, so that's good. It's just that he doesn't have a lot of harassment forces up, and this entire east side of the map is not defended, which is kind of important because drone is going to be having no problem getting to that getting through the east side of the map and it looks like his commander is building up a stinger at the center he really wants to kick the center actually drone apparently does care about the center very much more than i expected oh, it. sorry i'm gonna these defense ranges are not strictly necessary i don't know why my hockey for toggling them unit under attack is not working. There we go. 
Anyway, the... Sorry about that, small aggression. But back to the game. Drone doing a pretty job harassing. Unfortunately, did have a laser turret in the way and warriors coming in from behind. But these bandits still have a lot of undefended medley strategies they can deal with. And this is what I was talking about. You gotta... I mean, you are gonna get attacked. Your economy is going to get attacked. So attacking your opponent's economy in turn is one of the better things you can do. So Banana, he is starting to fall behind now thanks to this harassment. The warrior trying to do what he can. This warrior has no problems, but the warrior over to the east side of the map trying to get rid of this outlaw. It should be able to do so. But it's going to take a fair amount of damage to the process. Actually, no, it won't. The outlaw looks like it's going to be able to run away. No, not quite. The outlaw not able to run away. But at the same time, we are starting to see Aspis's and Thugs. And Felons, not even Thug for prep, just Aspis. And then from there, Felon. And Epic Drone loses his commander, trying to get radar coverage on the warrior to kill it. Not able to do so, and not able to hit as a result. It's unfortunate for that commander. That commander is now down. At the same time, we're seeing the same thing happening here. Actually, mostly not even radar coverage. It's just this slope is just weird for them. They can't easily hit thanks to that from the looks of it. No, never mind. It is a matter of radar dots. It is targeting radar, and it's not able to do so. Or apparently, no, that can't be right. They can't be. That's gotta be line of sight angle thing. That's actually really bizarre. You'd expect it would aim a bit more correctly, but apparently not. Well, at any rate, we do see that Drone has lost his commander. He has felons here to try to deal with what everything he can find. But even with that, he's losing that. He's losing the felon shield. No power left. Banana's commander was taking some damage from it, but not nearly enough. And without shields, felons cannot attack. At the same time, massive force of warriors and rockers from the back, or from the west side of the map, where it's pretty weakly defended, coming in and tearing apart everything that's been basically this new expansion. As a result, that's going to be very... Well, it's not quite something that Epic Drone can't deal with. I mean, he's actually not taking a huge amount of damage. He's taking some damage, but it's not terrible. He can recover from this. A bunch of thugs are coming over to support the felons, and that will be more effective. Able to get more constant fire rate as a result of that. Losing another Gauss turret. I'm not sure if Banana is trying to... I mean, the thing with Gauss turrets is that they can't actually penetrate shields anymore. Used to be the case they could. They can't anymore. <clears throat> Very important to note that. And the felon able to take out the center. Drone able to take the entire center for himself, and at the same time, Zeus's are coming down through the center for him. Under attack. As well as Rector coming in from the... West side of the map, probably try to take over as much as he can of the west side of the map. Drone doesn't have some bandits inside Banana's territory, but it may not be quite so bad for Banana. However, this Zeus, these Zeus's are taking a lot of damage. It's very difficult to get rid of felons, like I said, as cloaky bots. Apparently, sharpshooters are the way to go, rather than Zeus's. But, I have not seen someone actually do that. I haven't tried it myself, but apparently that's the best option that you have against felons as cloaky bots. That or Forfeiture. Forfeiture is another option, but Forfeiture is typically a poor choice. It's not really a counter, but it is a response. It is not, however, a response that clearly Banana is planning on going for. It is a response that is fortunately going to be... I mean, it's not the response, obviously, that anyone would go for sensibly. However, that is likely to be the response regardless. This felon is coming in. It has fully charged shields. It has a bunch of fully charged thugs next to it. And the Aspices are about half charged. But once they get fully charged, it's going to be very difficult for this felon to be destroyed. I expect some ticks to be coming up, and they are indeed coming. However, getting ticks into the range of the felon to stop it, that's the real trick, especially with thug support. That is very difficult to pull off. At the same time... There are some defenders trying to deal with this outlaw. Well, defenders and to deal with the outlaws here. Trying to harass a bit, but really the real story is this felon that may be taken out by ticks. But this tick is likely to be killed first. The felon has great range, has perfect accuracy, and this tick is about to be spotted and about to be destroyed by... No, not by the felon. In fact, able to get rid of a thug. Not a bad trade, not the ideal choice, but still gets rid of some shield support. However, at the same time, a lot more shield support is coming in. Drone has 30 metal income. Actually, both players have 30 metal income. And Drone, mostly building bandits at this point. He, I guess he figures he has enough shield support for his felon. He just wants to build bandits to continue to harass 
and make sure he's not putting all of his eggs in one basket. But still... There's another tick up for Banana, but that tick is not going to be the most effective if it's not able to get rid of that Felon. That's really what its target is. That Felon... And the Felon is going to take out the east side of the map. This, this commander's done. Banana's commander is dead in the water. He just doesn't know it yet. Actually, it probably does know it yet. In fact, it is trying to terraform its way to safety, but that is not going to be enough. The Felon takes it out within two sec or within five seconds. Not quite two. Not quite that fast. But still pretty fast. Losing his commander, losing a lot of his economy, the entire east side of the map has been destroyed by drone, and the west side is being attacked by gla by bandits. The bandits won't do much against the Zeus's, but still, that is a lot of damage being dealt. And surprisingly... Okay, there we go. Bananas still continuing to build up from his Glygobot factory. A bit surprised he wasn't working on that before. That's really weird. And as you can see, drone is getting a lot of energy income. In fact, even with the energy income, he is spending a lot of it on shields. Like a lot of his energy is being spent on shield recharge. So he doesn't have overdrive at this point. He only has... Well, he only has the base 2 metal. He does not have overdrive, and that is pretty big. And the tick there, just about in the worst spot it could be, really, for dealing with this. I mean... It's out in the open. There's nothing really supporting it right now. It might get supported later on, but it doesn't really matter. Brawlers are coming in as well. Just to finish this off once again, and since Drone won game one, this is going to basically be it. Banana's going to be out of the tournament at this point. And the last... Last attack coming in. The Felon and Bandits and Drones and... Sorry, Bandits, Drones, everything is coming in. The Tick actually doing a pretty good job getting rid of both Aspises. But unfortunately, no support... The fire support not here in time. The Zeus's are not able to get rid of the Aspis, and admittedly, it does mean the Felon has hardly any shield recharge. So actually, I was wrong. That Tick was actually in a really good spot, it turns out. The Felon was in a bad spot to deal with it. Able to get rid of one of the Aspises, but not both. And unfortunately, not able to... T he didn't manage to follow up killing that Felon. Now, at the same time, Zeus's are coming in to the south. Not able to do anything, and that is game. Banana has thrown in the towel, and that is Drone winning that particular match of the tournament. So, at this point, I don't know what is going to be next. I would imagine that probably QB versus Lori is going to be next, so I'll get to that when I get to it. And it looks like... Oops, let's back up. Looks like from here, we're going to be seeing... No, hasn't been updated yet, but yeah, it looks like... Klon versus Norm is ongoing right now, so it's a little late to cast that. QB versus Lori is likely the next one starting, so I expect that to be actually going right now. So I'll be back with that shortly. Please stay tuned. And thank you for watching so far. It's been a good couple hours, and hope you've been enjoying these matches. I've been enjoying them. They're quite interesting. It should be a lot better, too, as you get further in the game and you get to stronger players against stronger players. I mean, it started out with most of the strong players not against each other, which is good, because it means that the finals are going to be more exciting as a result. Although, admittedly, Sackdoff did lose to Lori, a bit of an upset. Well, not quite an upset, but we'll see with Lori and Kyubei how that goes. Assuming that game wasn't played already, but it looks like it wasn't. So we'll be back shortly.